Do hey it. everyone, welcome to episode 254 of the official podcast. This episode, it's a pretty important one. Uh, it's going to make you laugh, might make you cry, may even uh, excite you a little bit in places that you've never been excited before. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about this week, including, but not limited to, there's a new uh, Game of Thrones show coming out. Yippee! Mm-hmm. And Woo-hoo! there's also oh. Twitch millionaires uh, afoot. People mm-hmm. that you wouldn't expect to be rich are apparently rich, which is just shocking. I can't believe it. I can't believe me. it. People with millions of fans giving them tons of money every single day have a lot of money. That's unheard of. Can't Why are the it. people giving them? It's the people giving them money too that are shocked that they they're rich. Like what? What did you think? Where did you think the money because was they're going? They're fucking stupid. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you stupid hear that people. <laughs> Oh um, my God. And there's there's some other stuff we can talk about eventually, but yeah, uh, just take it away. Whoever wants to take it away. So Game of Thrones has a new show. Yep, it's called what is it? Birth of the Dragon. No, that's Bruce Lee. What the fuck is it called? Like a drag dragon? Home of Dragons. Is it the prequel they promised? Is it finally out? I don't. Know. I didn't watch the. Trailer. Yeah. The, no, no, well, yeah. I guess it's a prequel in the sense that it takes place before the events of Game of Thrones, but it doesn't contain any any of the characters or anything like that. It's like two hundred years beforehand, I think. Um, hmm. And it's based around like the Targaryen, you know, the Dragon House, their rise to power and stuff like that, or maybe That's... it's their fall. I can't remember. That's actually kind of smart that it's that early of a prequel because it lets them completely ignore everything that happens in the regular show. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, now sure. all the consequences Is... of their bad writing can just instantly be washed away. Amen. Is the fat ass writing this one too? Uh, or he's attached can they to actually it, yeah. finish the strip? Oh, boy. No, he's attached <laughs> to it. He's attached. So apparently, according to. Um, I think the man himself, he wasn't, he, he didn't take part in any of the writing sessions for like the final four seasons or whatever, but he's more attached to this project. I think he fell out, uh, like he, there was bad blood between him and the D&D people, which wouldn't be surprising. Until he gets bored. Yeah. He's just such a fickle fucker. What, what's even the point? Get the Breaking Bad guy. Have him write a, <laughs> a Game of Thrones show because he's actually a good writer and he sticks to his shit. And he can make good shows. Forget about, uh... What was his name? George R.R. R. Martin? Fuck him. Yeah. Yeah, fuck the guy who made the series. Yeah, he doesn't deserve <laughs> to work on it. Although I guess that's, uh, <laughs> that's what off. Disney's kind of doing with Star Wars, so... What's, what's, what? What's Disney that, doing with Star Wars? That's kind of what Disney's doing with Star Wars. They don't give a fuck about George Lucas. True. Yeah. <laughs> Just doing their own shit. I don't think... George Lucas doesn't give a fuck about Star Wars or George Lucas. He's happy being a billionaire. <laughs> Do you think he wants to, like, wedge his way back into the, the filth of, like, the Star Wars fan base? He's happy to be out. Filth? Star Wars, Wars fan base is one of the best there is. Yeah. They're I very know. nice. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, they're uh, super I, old <laughs> or super young. We, we did, There's no in between. We did a tier list recently on um, Star Wars properties, like films and stuff, and I I gave a uh, a bad rating apparently to a show called Star Wars Rebels. A- everyone in the <laughs> like comments took away my Star Wars fan <laughs> license because of that rating. I'm no longer allowed to be a Star Wars fan. What I found I didn't really like Star Wars Rebel. <laughs> what I found really entertaining about that is I'm sure Kai and Andrew don't know what Star Wars Rebels is. It's quite literally for babies. It's a show that's yeah. made for actual infants. That's that's what I found so surprising. Like it's it's it was on Disney, like the the children version of yeah, Disney, was, like not even normal Disney, like Disney XD Disney. or whatever. Yep, yeah, Disney XD, XD. <laughs> which is like actually for like Wait, babies. SD? What does that stand for? Uh, uh, I think it's like the emoticon, maybe like a smiley face. <laughs> I think that's more what it is. Oh, XD. Sorry, I thought you meant you said SD. Okay, fair no. enough. No, so yeah, it, it's like literally a children's show, which they can, again, they can do like children's show well. Like I like Star Wars The Clone Wars, which was, you know, more geared towards children, but it was still kind of fun to watch. But then Rebels was just a really bad one and really like over the top children orientated and it was bad. But no, apparently like all of the comments in that comment section were just constantly trying to tell me that it's not actually a kid's show. <laughs> 
If you just look at the cover the of it, if you just Google Star Wars Rebels and look at the cover, you can immediately tell exactly what age group it's for. It's wild. Yeah. Okay, but I is also, it one of those shows where like you think it's for children, but only man children watch it? Like My Little, My Little Pony, Pony. And Steven Universe. I I would yeah, like to. Those? I would like to downplay their criticism of me that way and say that, no, they're, they're just mound children, but I actually think most of them are children that had watched it. Like, I think most of the people commenting Aww. that I'm no longer a Star Wars fan were children at the time that came out. You know what I mean? Like, maybe they're teenagers yeah. now or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a possibility as well. And they don't want to be told that they've watched children's show or what, I don't know. But it is a children's show. It genuinely is. Undeniably a kid's show, yeah. No oh boy. Kaya, ha the comments have are you... not gonna like this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah. can't do anything more than revoke my Star Wars license. <laughs> that's yeah, that's <laughs> the most done. they can ever do to, to Jackson. Oh no! <laughs> what a cruel fate. I'm a man without a cause at the moment. I've got no allegiance <laughs> to anything. I'm lost. I, I wake up in the morning. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. I can't uh, talk to my fellow Star Wars fan. I, well, I can't even call myself a Star Wars fan. Fuck. I'm yeah, gone. you don't like rebels. Get the fuck out of here, man. You know what was crazy? I went to the Legos. store the other day. I went to the store the other day to play, uh, buy some more Lego Star Wars sets, and they told me, no, you, you're not allowed to anymore. <laughs> we saw the tier all list. Because of the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all because of the Star Wars <laughs> Rebels tier list. Jesus Christ. Oh, well. I, well. I actually want to know. I'm curious. Kaya, do you have any kind of shows that you are embarrassed of enjoying or embarrassed of uh, watching? Like, have you ever watched any children's show that you've really enjoyed? No, I'm very like, proud about they, the They do exist. Like, there like, are good like children. Like what? Yeah, but oh, well, it's Riverdale's like... not for children. Well, not for children, but like, it's the sort of stuff that you wouldn't expect to catch me watching. I suppose it's not for... No, nothing really for children. I don't know. I don't like cartoons too much. I think the last children's cartoon I rewatched a while ago was The Last Airbender. I am currently good. watching that. That's a show for it's all ages, okay. too. Like It is. Even, like, geriatrics would love that show. It's just a it really is. good show. It's very well written. That's another, another, another show I, I haven't watched. I want them to leave it alone. I heard they're trying to reboot it or something, make a cartoon out of it, and I just don't want them to. Just leave it alone. Make a cartoon it's out of a cartoon? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I meant make another cartoon rather than a movie. Ah. Uh, because I think for a while they also floated the idea of making a live-action spin-off or something. Just let it die. You made a good show. Just let it rest in peace. For God's sake. Uh, but yeah, other than that, no. Jackson. I'd yeah, have to think. I was just curious. I was just curious. Mm -mm. Anyway, um, yeah. So let's let's talk about the whole Twitch thing, Andrew. Um, I I don't give, me. That wasn't my topic. Yeah, give that us was a your rundown. topic. <laughs> give um, us a rundown. All right. Well, you're, so, you're the man in the middle of it. They so, only leaked it because you're on the list. I am on the list. Yeah. You know who else is on the list? Charlie. <gasps> I know. He's like number twenty. Hey, um, we're, no, we're number 22, Andrew, goddammit. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, round up. Yeah, He's Mr. Two point something million compared to 60k. All right, then. Um, so, basically, this list got leaked. I believe it was on 4chan. Of a big data dump of pretty much every single Twitch partner's earnings and a bunch of metrics. And data that, you know, is normally only private to the streamer and Twitch. So people put it out there and they put it out in a spreadsheet and it was like, here's how much this streamer made in this time period. Here's how much they make a month on average. Here's how much this and that. And there's actual websites now where you can plug in a big streamer and it will tell you how much money they make and a few other <laughs> metrics. So very unattentive people, very, very just, I, I don't know, living under a rock or in denial or in delusion land people are shocked that some of these people are millionaires or really taken aback that these people have a ton of money even though when you watch their content it is a non-stop waterfall cascade every literal second of five dollars five dollars ten dollars hundred dollars ten dollars hundred dollars ten dollars 
going for however long they stream. So like five, six, seven hours every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. And it's like, you really didn't think they were rich, especially when you also factor sponsored streams yeah. being paid to play games. Like The stuff that was leaked was just uh, like subs and ad revenue, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it it's fucking mind boggling to me that these people are upset by this. It's it's such a big no shit. I mean, just I don't I don't know how people didn't see this, how, how they didn't immediately know this, and they get upset because they're like, well, I was giving you my money thinking we were like relatable and we're bros, and I you know I work really hard and I make forty fifty k a year. And I give you some of that because I thought you were struggling to make that. It's like, dude, they have millions of people giving them that much money. What are you talking about? The, the only way I could see it being, um, uh, like, I could see myself getting kind of like upset is if the streamers themselves, but like, are begging. begging or yeah. yes, yeah. that if, that is definitely on the streamer. <laughs> if they are begging, they're they're scum. Like streamers who beg outright just you know, give me money, oh, I deserve it because I'm entertaining you, oh, you have to pay me, or the stream is ending. Like, there's, there's a difference between a subathon, which is for fun, and they go, oh, you know, when the timer runs out, I'm gonna stop, but they're still doing everything that they normally do, that's fine. But if the streamer's going, oh, if I don't get 10 subs, then you just get nothing. I'm gonna sit here and wait for my money, and then the stream starts. Oh, you better are fucking you, pay me for this. That's when you're a real scummy you piece calling of shit. out? Are you calling out DSP? Oh, no, absolutely. no, 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 no. He wouldn't do that. He, well, yeah, well, no. Where was he on the list? Don't go that far, Andrew. Didn't DSP's well, actually he pretty list? high up on the list. I think he was at 78k or something. He, what the uh, fuck? Did, wait, didn't yeah. financials also get hacked recently? Chat, what help. I'm pretty sure his financials got hacked, and the most shit that he spends money on, somebody made a graph, oh, was the yeah, WWE alcohol game. Alcohol and gotcha games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he literally does nothing but drink and play his stupid fucking slot machine mobile games. Yeah. Where's that fucking link? But, like, I, I, I don't know why people are so reactionary to this. It's crazy. And also factor in, how many big streamers also have big YouTube channels? Because I'll let you guys in mm -hmm. on a secret. YouTube pays even better than Twitch. It's about $2 yeah. per every thousand views on YouTube. So if they're uploading daily, weekly videos that are getting millions of views, you can run the numbers on that. That is a lot more money than Twitch. That's why most Twitch streamers have highlight channels on, exactly. on YouTube. It's not for your enjoyment. I, I don't know. It's easy money. I don't know who's still <laughs> ingrained in this culture and doesn't realize these are actual celebrities. Not not just e celebrities, not just in the computer, but when you have millions of followers, you are a literal celebrity. Straight up. Yeah. I don't know why it's hard for people to grasp and why they're shocked by it. Do you think we finally reached a point where internet celebrities are on the same level as real life celebrities? No, not in terms no. of like uh, like. Uh, recognition, I guess. Like, if you go up to anyone on the street and say, hey, do you know Chris Pratt? And they'll be like, yeah, that's yeah. Mario. And if you go up to them and be like, do you know PewDiePie? They'll be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. If yeah, you're, if depending you're walking... on their age range, though. I think well, it's, uh, yeah, eventually yeah, we're going to get age. to the point where that's replaced. No, not even. Because yeah. YouTubers also are on such a scattered platform, whereas, like, mainstream celebrities are so... What, what's the term? Like solo focus? So for example, if a YouTuber releases a big YouTube video and it gets 10 million views, who gives a fuck? Compare that to the number of people who watched Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. You know, it's not even close. Or who are yeah, aware but, uh, of it. I'm not, I'm not talking it about... I'm not talking about like Sally Bumfuck of uh, YouTube vlog channel number 5062. I'm talking about like the PewDiePie's, the the big names. Like I, th I think they're equatable to like Robert Downey Jr. No. Not no, even no, remotely no, no, close. No, are you no. joking? Mm -hmm. What? Not I think the best of both worlds are bigger Jackson, than... Jackson, this is not a dig at Charlie at all, but let's use him as an example because he's literally in this category. If you walk down the street with Robert Downey Jr. and Charlie, do you honestly believe anyone would go, oh my god, it's critical? No, they'd all be going, holy shit, it's Robert Downey Jr. Can you imagine, though? No, like, uh, oh, that'd be so cool, know. though. They don't know Robert <laughs> Downey Jr. Like, oh my god, it's the guy that fucking throws dildos. 
Yeah. Oh, get the <laughs> fuck out of my way, man. I got to get that guy's Robert, autograph. I need a picture. Robert Daddy, it's fair, but Robert Daddy Jr. is going to protect you gets... from the fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only people where that would apply, Jackson, is very young kids because they don't have the reference. They don't have the, like, experience. They don't know that Robert Downey yeah, Jr. So has been in, in Dustin's I don't know, movies. In 20, in 20 years when those kids are, like, the most prevalent force on the planet and they've aged up uh, and the old people are dead, then the YouTubers will be, right? No, That's because the way we're then, trending. Then, then, no, then the new celebrities are going to overtake them. Then the people who star the, in their I mean, the movies new celebrities are going to be when the you YouTubers. Say celebrity, let though, me, let you're, me give you a... you're talking about movie stars only. Where like, okay, them aside though, like, do you really think Stephen Colbert is gets more views than Charlie? Who the fuck yes. watches those people still? Who who the hell still television watches television still gets millions and millions of viewers? It's going to be a scam. Maybe. I bet they've. I've got like uh, what are those analytic things that television uses? The Nielsen reports, right? That's what they are. I don't uh, know. Nielsen I don't families. Know. It's, for I, I, it's how they. It's how it's how many? they get like their analytics. It's how like they track a, a certain amount of families and they're they're viewing history and then they extrapolate the stats from that. So what I'm saying is maybe they've just got like a warehouse full of like I don't know uh, DV. What are they DVR <laughs> yeah. things that are just set to <laughs> play <laughs> play their shows? Yeah. Well, you and they're just reporting on white noise. You also got to remember, Kaya, it's the same thing how there's levels of YouTubers, there's level of real life celebrities. You know, if Chris Pratt and fucking like the host of a forgotten late night talk show are walking down the street, more people are going to care about Chris Pratt. If if a big time musician like Ozzy Osbourne is walking down the street next to like a, a kind of famous, decent indie band lead singer, everyone's going to know Ozzy Osbourne. You know, it applies to YouTubers. Yeah, okay. If PewDiePie... And a fucking, like, half a million sub gaming channel are walking down the street. The, the, most people are going to know PewDiePie. You know, it's it's all just tiers of celebrity. But okay. big but YouTubers. But saying, according to Variety, Colbert also won out in total viewers for the third season in a row. The Late Show averaged 3.8 million viewers this season. That's, like, average. That's it's not big dick swinging view numbers, right? So that's, like... But it is compared to YouTube. Charlie throwing dildos numbers. No, but so so first of all, that's double Charlie's average view count. So w with how massive Charlie already is, double his audience. That's the people watching Jimmy Kimmel. And number two, how many YouTubers are in that bracket? Like 20 people, 30 people, you know? Shane Dawson. not enough to hack, apparently. I don't know. Yeah. This is mind blowing. Who watches this garbage? <laughs> These people are all going to die I'm telling out, right? you, it's going to be like a warehouse full of TVs set to Jimmy Kimmel. And they just send that information. No, everyone to... loves Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, Let's not get a sick of this away. propaganda. There has to be a bunch of boomers who are going to die eventually. Nobody likes Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. You want to know the mystery, like the actual mystery? Who's watching James Corden? Yeah. Like, that's, 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 they're all the same. They're all bad. All those like late night show hosts. Yeah, they're pretty fucking bad. They're awesome. yeah. Apart from maybe, oh God, I don't mind. Like, I don't mind like Conan, but even well, and, and what's Conan. and what's really yeah. funny is when we get older and we have our audience, the kids are going to be going, "Who listens to the official podcast?" Oh my God, those guys are so unfunny. <laughs> it's gonna be the late night show with Charles White. Yeah, <laughs> the pretty kids much. going, "Who's that fucking idiot?" <laughs> I, I fuck? think about that all the fucking time. What's gonna happen when we're forty? What's the game plan? Because there's no fucking way this show's going to last till then. There's no way when our audience grows up with us, there's no way they're going to give a fuck about us anymore when they have their own kids and their own fucking careers and shit. That's not true. We they, teach them how they, to they introduce, them. Yeah, they introduce yeah. us to their yeah. kids and then we become their new, uh, that, like, where they were audience, but where they're fathers, new oh, fathers. Oh, God. Oh, God. That sounds good. No. I like that. We should be their dads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the official podcast Chances can be the will lifelong be their constant. Godfathers. That's cute. Yeah. It can be our slogan: the podcast for life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Life is, yeah. A podcast <laughs> isn't just for Christmas. Yeah, pass it down to your children. Well, it, it, it's the same idea as a fit body, right? You get mm -hmm. it, and you can Ooh, stick yeah. with mm -hmm. it for life. I mean, I don't know yeah. about you guys. This is a true, honest to God story about me. I, I'm being, I'm being candid. I'm speaking directly into the fucking camera like a drug PSA. I used to be pretty chunky. I used to be a, a flabby boy. I used to be fairly round, a bit doughy. I did not exercise. And then one day, 
I got real fucking tired of it and I went, okay, I'm gonna join a gym. I started working out there and now I, mean, I like to think I'm in pretty decent shape. I've lost a good amount of weight recently. And I work out like probably average three, four days a week, you know, at the minimum. And I, I can't go back. I like to think the same is for you, Charlie. Mm -hmm, you, absolutely. You just, you just can't go back to being a slobby, lazy piece of shit. And I think Jackson, Kaya, you both stay active as well. It, it really mm -hmm. is a life change that once you make it, you cannot go back. You just feel better. You look better. It improves your confidence. You feel more able to do things, less tired. You cannot go back. So I am very proud to talk about FitBod because everyone out there listening should stay active. It completely changes your life only for the better. When you go from being very sedent uh, sedentary, from sitting on the couch, eating shitty food, just not even bothering to actually doing activities, participating in stuff, getting up, it is completely revolutionary. Now that's why you can use FitBod. I mean, there's no perfect body for everybody, but what you can always do is continually improve. No workout fits all which is why FitBod creates fitness programs that will adapt to you. The thing that I personally love about FitBod specifically is you don't need equipment. They have tons of bodyweight routines looking for you to get fit during COVID when quarantine was really, really strong. It was a great way to not have to go to the gym, not have to go outside, unfortunately, keep you in shape. And also, I personally have been running a lot with Strava, which is a run tracker app. And FitBod integrates with Strava, as well as other fitness apps such as Apple Health and Fitbit. So if you're already using those programs, you can just sweep this right in there. Personalized training on a budget can be tough, but FitBod starts at only $9.99 a month or $59.99 a year. Sign up now and get 25% off of your membership at fitbod.me official. You'll get all these personalized workouts with or without equipment, making yourself a fitness program that will adapt dynamically and give you new exercises. You can pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBod today, and your future self will thank you. That's 25% off at fitbod.me slash official. Work out. Trust me, there's some of you out there who are, are probably a little bigger and pretty depressed and you don't know why like all the video games aren't working all the shows aren't working you even have a good social <laughs> life but hanging out with your friends isn't doing it trust me move your body it does yeah. wonders for your mental health it really it actually does, does. You, yeah you're not wrong at all it actually does i very often de-stress by going on a run if i'm kind of like antsy and have a lot of energy i will just go running and i feel way better afterwards yeah, I was gonna say if you if you're not one to like want to work out or anything, you think that's not you, then at least go outside and like move your body by walking yeah. places and stuff like that. I think that's very helpful. Anything, as well. fucking walk around a park or your neighborhood. Do like go outside, move. It it just helps. It really does. Ah, yeah, oh, thanks. Fit are butt. we still we still talking about Twitch? Yeah, what do you think, Charlie? Huh? Do you have any defense of yourself, <laughs> stupid billionaire? Yeah, fuck you, man. You're so successful. Suck my ass. I, uh, I don't I don't know what else there is to talk about. You guys really hit the main things. I think it's just people like really wanting the people they watch to be exactly like them. And when they're not, they get very upset about it. Yeah. There's not I, much I, you can really parasocial about that. I think at its core, yeah. it's it's definitely parasocial, but I think at its core, it's jealousy. How come I have to work at my shitty job and they don't? How come they're doing what I want as a career and I'm not? How come they make a ton of money just doing this easy thing and I don't, you know? It's See, jealousy. I kind of get that I I kind of get that frustration when you like it, I I get the frustration that if you have like a meaningless job and you're not you're putting in an insane amount of hours and you're not getting paid, it's easy to be jealous. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like it's not the Twitch streamer's fault that they're they're just given money. <laughs> like, if, if you were in that position, you would absolutely yeah. be doing that as well. So I don't see the point in taking they, out on them. They absolutely ignore the good that comes with it. Because number one, a lot of these streamers do a lot of very positive things with their wealth. For example, mm -hmm. Charlie does a lot of charity streams. Yeah. And many other Twitch streamers do a lot of like fundraisers. They do a lot of like awareness drives. They do a lot of like big events. They do a lot of shit like that. 
And number two, if the people who are mad about this were in their position, they do the exact same fucking thing. Yeah. If someone went up to them and said, hey, I'll give you this much money to play video games, they'd quit their job in a heartbeat and take all that money. They wouldn't think twice about, well, what about all these other people? What about, what about, you know, all these guys? It's like, no, they'd want them to have it too, but wouldn't mean sacrificing what they've got for it. I think there's a point to be made in that they're overpaid or whatever, but at the same time, everyone in entertainment is overpaid once they're successful, once they've reached any kind yeah, of... Yeah, let's, let's pull the camera back, Jackson. Everyone in capitalism is overpaid. It's not a fair system. It's just how it works. Unfortunately, that's how capitalism is. If you can make it, you can continue to make it, and there's no ceiling. There's no cap. There's no cap on capitalism. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But there's really not. You can just make money forever and make more so of it. So what... As someone that knows nothing about political ideologies, what happens to YouTubers under a communist uh, society? Oh, God, don't start this. I knew Jesus Kaya was going to speak <laughs> on this. I knew Kaya was going to speak on this. The comment in. section full of these people. <laughs> don't. Oh, uh, yeah. Would they still be successful, though? Like, would, would they still get money? I mean, Kevin, yes, uh, millions of them. And they will shit in golden toilets while you starve. Let's move on to yeah. something fun. <laughs> Did you guys know some people eat raw meat for health? Yep. yep. I'm very well aware. Mm -hmm. I love that shit. Have you ever I've looked into in every it? now because and then on I... that? Yeah, I started following this one girl on Twitter. It's kind of amusing. So she does not drink water. Because according <laughs> to her, uh, water dehydrates you. And so when somebody said, why do you avoid drinking water? She replied, depletes... Uh oh, uh, should I say her name? I'll no. put it in our chat, but I don't want to call her up publicly. She's not really... She's kind of small. She says, water depletes electrolytes. Also, when you eat raw meat, you're eating already hydrated food, so you literally stop feeling thirst. Just put water on your skin. What does it do? Dry it out. Put beef, tallow, or olive oil, and it's hydrated. Now imagine that on the inside of your body. Have you guys ever tried eating raw yeah, meat? Yeah, inside of body, exact same as outside of body. That right. You smart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why whenever okay, I have an I upset tummy, you. I don't eat antacids. I just crush them into my fucking forearm until they start working. <laughs> yeah. I will now show you her food. She posts pictures oh, now God, for our podcast so listeners. Weird. It's pretty Imagine, yucky, yeah. you know when you're making meatballs and you put a bunch of ground beef in a bowl and then an egg and then you like smush it around? You knead it? Imagine yeah. that... Except that's what she eats. It's literally just a bowl of raw meat with an egg cracked in the middle of it. And then it's a shitty salad where she chopped up a bunch of, I think that's fish? Yeah, fish. Uh, with lemon slices. So that's her meal now. Yum, yum, yum. Many p oh my god. Yum, yum. Many so people the jumping the into the raw picture of the raw meat. fish though. The raw fish is the uh. one that I have the main issue with. Can't you literally get like salmonella? No, what? it's the other way around with raw yeah, chicken Jesus. and raw beef. Raw fish is actually okay to eat. Yeah. It's called sushi. Oh, yeah, I true. think you can't eat raw <laughs> beef if you... <laughs> I think you can eat raw beef if you remove the outer layer of meat. Yeah, and that's called uh, tartar. That's why you can... Yeah. Oh, I so, didn't know that. So tartar is actually okay but too. It can't taste good. It's, Wait a it's second, a, no, like, you sons of bitches, I just googled it. Major types of food poisoning that can result from eating raw or undercooked fish and shellfish <laughs> look, include salmonella look. and vibro- Yo, you're yes, wrong! It, it depends <laughs> on the meat. There is sushi-grade fish, which is perfectly okay to eat raw, and then there's other types of fish that's not. The one food, though, that is never okay to eat raw is chicken. It is okay. horribly bad for you and will easily make you sick. And the fact she's eating raw chicken is a terrible, terrible idea. But it she's also, also fine. so disgusting. I don't oh, know how. What do you know? Well, she she wasn't initially, I guess. So here's another tweet from her. <laughs> um, let's just call her M. M says, many yeah. people jumping into raw meat and eggs diet without reading Ajuna's Wonder Planets first and being surprised with their first detox. The first time you try raw meat and eggs, you will likely get very, very sick. It goes away after once the bacteria settles in. <laughs> oh my god. god. Guys, That's my favorite. Guys, I, guys I, I have a new fucking if motto. If you eat raw meat, 
I, you'll get sick. I have a new fucking motto I've been living by, and it's been helping a lot. And it's could a caveman do this, or would a caveman do this? Because it's like <laughs> think think about us. Think about us as a species. We have evolved over what hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of years, learning certain things. But before we had real technology and real cultivation, how did we survive? And it's like, well, we learned to cook food pretty fucking early because of all the health benefits and all the shit of it. So I think would a caveman eat his food raw? Yeah, probably. But he'd more than likely cook it, you would think, right? Yeah. So I'm, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and cook arguments? it. We, but we used to because be so like much healthier common... back then, Andrew, so we've really started yeah. to poison ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Fair. us now. Fair. We came, we, Is there... Okay, we became guys, too dependent it, on cooking. God, you're right. Maybe you know, maybe a listener knows. Is there a name for that stupid argument where, it, like, people will draw examples from the animal kingdom and they'll compare us to animals? Like, oh, animals eat raw shit or animals rape, right? Like, who gives a fuck that, about animals, dude, though? Dude, that's related to the vegan shit. That pisses me off so much when they go, like, they try to stop you from drinking milk and, like, cow stuff, and they're like, did you know that humans are the only animals on the planet to drink another animal's breast milk? And I'm like, yeah, did you know that seahorses are the only animals where males give birth? You want to start trying that? Uh, what's your fucking point? There's tons we're of also only, the in only the world animal... animals. Right, we're also Capable the only animal that space explores flight. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. who gives a shit? <laughs> Fuck and it's all thanks to breast milk, baby. <laughs> I know, it's, it's just <laughs> stupid. Go, There's Russians titties, that build please. on the milk of others. God. <laughs> Oh, vegans. Uh, yeah, so she's been uh, tons of fun. I don't know. I don't think I could ever give up steaks. Cooked steaks, I mean. Uh, yeah, I could I, give up cooking. Like, in terms yeah, of food for... preparation. I, I could give up Just certain anything. specific foods, but, like, cooked foods? Nah, I can't. I, I gotta have hot meals every so often. What would you even do without cooking? What, you just eat apples and bananas and, like, raw yeah. ingredients? Probably fruits, veggies. That's and... dumb. Juices. You'd have to go straight. Ew, I guess you'd have, have to go straight to the titties of the cows for the milk. I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, raw milk is also dangerous because bacteria can get in there. It's raw milk is very dangerous. It. Yeah. Yeah. Raw milk. I. I mean, if I have to drink something raw, I'll take raw milk over raw chicken. Nah, any day. man. That's they're fine. both. But raw I'll milk cope. has. Uh, so raw milk is before it's pasteurized, and you're not supposed to drink yeah. it because it has tons of like bacteria and shit in it. That's not good so for what you. does the pasteurization actually do? I assume one I of you was a dairy a farmer. If you put a gun to my head, I will drink a whole field's worth of cow milk <laughs> right from their udders instead of raw chicken. That's so disgusting. <laughs> I fucking... Don't you just hate chicken like before you cook it? Isn't it gross? It's so translucent and yeah, everything. Yeah, it is. It's, it's fucking yucky. weird. Yeah. It's pink. Gross. God, yeah. There there was a raw Sorry, chicken on movement for a while. It was a long time ago on the internet, but there were people who were like, oh, I'm going to try medium rare chicken, and it's delicious. And I'm like, uh, don't do that. Ew. It's not a good to idea. Me, is, <laughs> ew. <laughs> to me, this isn't just another avenue of like Darwinism. I say let them eat their raw food. It, it, it'll sort itself out. They never actually die, though. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it seems like they are fine. And okay, so to be fair, though, it would be silly, I guess, to suggest that like man is the only animal on Earth who cannot eat shit raw, like every yeah. other animal that exists. But I still don't want to do it because I don't have to. This is it's something I would do if I was super desperate, right? If I was out of food, like and no fire, no campfire nearby. It's like when you're playing fucking Legend of Zelda or something, and there's no campfire to cook your ingredients, so you just eat the apple. Yeah, but you get less like health that fine. way, Kaya. Use the gamer analogy in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> less hearts. Yeah, that's. A, I don't know, Kaya. I your argument is it. like fucking what you'd see on a T-shirt from Walmart, where it's like, oh, I cook my food <laughs> to get more hearts, and it's like a fucking <laughs> chef apron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little cell, the heart, and oh, it's like hurts. all full because of the fucking meal. Oh, God. Yeah, but their argument is like those t-shirts you see people wear that have like skeletons on them and they're t two paragraphs long. Like, I fought <laughs> for this country and my right to eat chicken raw and it's good for me and I'm also a trucker. God bless. It's fine. Okay. Eat your raw chicken, you fucking weirdo. No, that had to do with skeletons. But don't tell me it's better. <laughs> I don't know. They eat it straight from the skeleton. 
Was it a Halloween themed symbolism. shirt? It's just a spooky skeleton <laughs> on there. You guys don't know those shirts? Mm, We're, yeah, it's like we a had a whole episode about, about those shirts. shirts. Yeah, we yeah. created those shirts. Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't, I've actually never heard of them for anything other than like my daughter's super hot yeah. and I'm a veteran, so don't fuck yeah. it. <laughs> I need. I right. gotta tell you three things in life I love: my guns, my milk, and my president. <laughs> <laughs> and only two of those are <laughs> fucking pasteurized. <laughs> there, there is the most like nonsensically specific sayings. God. Yes, those people are putting examples there. Do you love your meundies, Andrew? Oh god, because I do. Oh my god, and I like yeah. them raw. I don't pasteurize if, them if at all. If undies came out with a skeleton shirt that said, I only wear one kind of underwear and it's me undies, so back off before my left and right fists show you how much I love my granddaughter, then I would wear the shit out of those underwear. But I'd probably wear them regardless of what they have on them because me undies are some of the softest and most comfortable underwear on the planet. Whether you're out running a killer or being abducted by aliens this Halloween, you can be comforted by the fact that your undies are sustainable and soft. Me undies are made from natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees, making their micromodal fabric soft, breathable, and dangerously cozy. Get your spooky season up and haunting with five new pairs. I see you, my boo, tricks and treats, lazy bones, and lazy purple. Available in undies, bralettes, socks, and loungewear, sizes extra small to 4XL. There are a lot of options to consider. But make a decision quickly because there's somebody right behind you! And it's probably Jackson wearing his comfortable MeUndies. MeUndies oh, has gotcha. this offer for you listening out there. You might say it's so good it's scary. <laughs> oh, that's a Halloween joke. That wasn't here in the writing. I made that one up. You can get 15% nice. off and free shipping with us. But hang on, there's also a, a tiny promise. If you're not satisfied with this product for any reason, you can return it for a full refund within 45 days. To get 15% off of your first order, free shipping, and the 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash official. That's meundies.com slash official. All four official boys wear me undies. I still, and you've kept up with podcast lore, so you know what I'm talking about. I still have my two polar bear pairs going strong. My girlfriend still gets pairs. She's actually a regular member now, too. She gets new underwear once every couple mm. weeks. So if you're a woman out there listening, it's not just men's underwear. It is women's as well. Or if you just want no women's club. underwear, doesn't matter. <laughs> if you just want men's underwear, it doesn't matter. Whatever kind of underwear you want to wear... Me undies has it, so don't be shy. Don't think just four strong men sign up. It's anyone out there. Chat, chat just found out they also have onesies. By the way, mm -hmm. breaking Ooh. news to everybody listening: get some onesies. That's true. They have anything you'd want to be comfy. They are super comfy, and they're not raw either, which is fantastic. They're mm -hmm. they're uh, cooks, however, underwear are cooked, so you won't get salmonella. Yeah, no it's pasteurized salmonella. underwear. <laughs> oh, I'll bring up a topic so, unless Kaya has one okay go ahead no no go ahead well I was just gonna bring this one up I found this last night uh, so there were two uh, sailors I believe or <laughs> is fishermen is a riddle yeah, <laughs> yeah. and they one of them told truths two and the other, other one only told bar. lies and <laughs> so the, the there were two fishermen and they got lost at sea for 29 days <laughs> And when they were rescued, one of them was interviewed and said he really didn't mind. And he really looked at it as a nice break from everything. And it, it really made me wonder, boys, what do you do to get away? And what do you kind of do to when you need to take a step back from everything? Because can you imagine living a life maybe so stressful, maybe where you work so hard all day or something that getting lost at sea and almost dying is a nice vacation? <laughs> Well, that, that, that man just thing. found out. That man just found out how much Twitch stream is made, so he had to get out of there. So what's your what's your know, go to like regimen? To... Off the grid. Yeah, it's like imagine drifting for twenty nine days. First of all, you're like, okay, well, buddy, we only have each other, and you know, I have urges, so that's gonna be a thing. <laughs> oh, they absolutely <laughs> fuck to some degree. <laughs> oh, yeah. hundred percent. Immediately, oh, yeah. at the minimum, some hand jobs all around. 
but also, at some point you're gonna go, wait a minute. I haven't received any letters in a while, no texts. I don't have to pay taxes anymore, do it. Huh, no rent? Actually, this is awesome. And I think I read that they, Andrew, they survived on like drift, uh, drifting, uh, what was it, coconuts? That mm-hmm. they found in the water <laughs> and rainwater. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> How many coconuts are in the ocean? Yeah, they collected <laughs> coconuts from the sea and trapped <laughs> rainwater in some canvas. Yeah, how can there be so many coconuts <laughs> floating around at sea? That's <laughs> uh, honestly impressive. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess it's preferable to killing and eating each other, right? Or starting with body parts, I suppose. But also, couldn't they just reach into the water and grab a fish or something? Well, that's okay. Fish, fish are just going to swim into your head. head. It's, yeah, it's, not, it's not a Disney yeah. movie. Like this. Okay, to be fair, to be fair, I do have that irrational fear of water, where that's my biggest fear is being lost at sea. So I have this belief that if I ever was drifting in the ocean, sharks would just be circling me and fish to be, and squid also to be fair, and jellyfish. Also to be fair, though, Charlie just said this wasn't a Disney movie, but apparently they had like an unlimited amount of coconuts swimming up to them, True, throwing yeah. themselves into their hands. <laughs> so that, that sounds very Disney orientated. That does sound very <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Yeah, they're like uh, sipping in pina coladas, having a great time. I wouldn't have wanted left either. They had infinite fucking coconuts. Yeah. So who found them? How did they get rescued? Yeah, who uh, ruined the let's fun? Let's see. They were. Oh God, I forgot. Uh. All I know is I think they drifted on the coastline of another country using the currents. Let's see. Uh, 29 days that's uh, like so what i would be most scared of in that situation is one like getting sunburnt i wouldn't want to be out of the sun that long that'd be painful especially on the ocean yeah Um, and also sorry go ahead no, 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 you go. You finish it. I was just going to say they apparently so the boat got caught in some currents and drifted into the town of pomio so they they just kind of washed up on shore somewhere in a small town Oh, they were apparently the so exhausted and weak they had to be physically carried off the boat. So that sucks. So those coconuts weren't really Jeez. doing it for them. <laughs> no, they really weren't. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> Do coconuts even have nutritional value? They don't sound like how. Damn it! How would they even have broken those? That's a good Open, point. Like <laughs> using each other's heads. <laughs> That's why they were so like <laughs> passed out. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, how long until you guys eat each other, though? Because 29 days is a very long time, and coconuts are very, very boring to eat. I think I think we'd have to think about it logically. Like, I'm fine with going half-half. Maybe we nibble each other's fingers to start off with. Because you well, don't well, have to eat each other to death immediately. Why fingers? Just, like, do some, like, wow. excess meat somewhere on your body, like toes or something holy shit they they did not need to find that many fat. coconuts guys apparently i hope this is wrong but one whole coconut is 1400 calories what? yeah Damn. i i want to oh, say this is, is wrong but it like says skin i i don't know but it says like the fruit of one medium coconut is 1400 calories that's an absurd amount from a it's fucking 280 coconut. calories per three uh Oh, wait, hang on. I'm mixing some numbers up on this one. Uh, One cup of coconut is almost 300 calories. That's insane. Wow. How, how many? All right, so how many calories do you need per day to survive? No, it's, like, it's you're not... You're not mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but you're not exerting yourself. You're just sitting in a boat floating. Yeah. Like, surely uh, you're not using much it's, energy. It's so probably less. roughly like 15 one to coconut. 2,000 calories. 1,500 to 2,000. They would have had each to eat one coconut a day. <laughs> oh my god. Such a shitty existence. <laughs> yeah, one coconut is en- is nearly enough to feed a whole man a whole day. That's, oh my god. I'm, no I'm still just shocked that they had so many coconuts, like arriving at their destination then, like coconut Uber was on their, its way. <laughs> like, how would they I'm, even get into water shocked. floating that way? I don't I'm even know how they, they float. float. They're so fucking heavy. <laughs> <laughs> There's something fishy about this story, Andrew. I do not believe this coconut. I, I th- this is a lie spread, like spread by like big coconut or something to sell coconuts. It's got to be. 
Not big coconut, those bastards. Those fucking evil assholes. Those scum. I don't believe that they could survive that way. And you said that they arrived on the beach and they were pretty much dead? Yeah, they had to be physically carried out of the boats. Or out but of they the had boat. enough energy to break open coconuts the entire time? And they were, I don't know. And they were saying they enjoyed it? Like, oh, that, that was a nice little break from everyday life. <laughs> Not stuck in traffic. <laughs> Just busting coconuts on each other's skulls. Maybe they were so exhausted. <laughs> they, they Maybe probably they had a knife. Out for being exhausted. They probably had a they knife or something. Over. You know, I mean, they were on a boat for work, so they probably had tools. So, oh, were they? Oh, okay. I thought they were like on a little tiny canoe for some reason. Uh, I don't know. No, they they so they went on this trip expecting long distance. They were on a four hundred kilometer uh, boat journey, so they prepared for a long voyage. So they probably oh, so had was it stuff like vessel? a knife and stuff. <laughs> was it an actual vessel that just like lost power or something? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't actually give the details on what kind of boat it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> they were on like so a yacht or something. Yeah, it was a luxury like a multi-million <laughs> dollar yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Personal chef just breaking the coconuts for yeah. them. <laughs> Once the buffet you ran out, we were screwed. Ugh. Yeah, that probably would have been a fun time. <laughs> uh, he says, Nanjikana, I, I guess his name is, Nanjikana said he has taken some positives away from the experience, such as a forced break from the chaos of a global pandemic. I had no idea what was going on while I was out there. I didn't hear about COVID or anything else, he said. <laughs> Jesus. I look forward to going back home, but I guess it was a nice break from everything. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm also kind of sick and fucking tired of hearing about that shit. Maybe we should all drift on a boat. On a luxury yacht. Yeah. Um, to answer Andrew's question, though, of what I would do to get away, I would literally just leave my, like, the, the city that I'm in and go for a holiday down in some other place. Like, that's all you can do, right? What would you yeah. do, Andrew? Uh, I, I take a small break. Like, I make sure to shut off my computer and kind of leave my phone in another room so that way I can just do something else, like watch a movie or play a game without any distractions. But you're still, kinda, in your, still in yeah, your house? Yeah, I'm, I'm still in the apartment, but even just a small gesture like that feels like it's inaccessible. You know, I'm not going to go through the options of turning my whole computer on and setting everything up just to do a small thing, you know? I'm not going to... I'm, I'm so lazy, I'm not going to get up and walk to the other room to check my phone. Bullshit. A Twitch streamer like you, every time you, you get answered, you're off to the Hamptons, I bet. Ski ski vacation. Oh yeah, me and me and one thousand three hundredth place or wherever the fuck I was on that list. <laughs> Wait, one thousand three hundred is huge, Andrew. That's yeah, big, that actually. is pretty good. No, it that is. Was, I'm not. I am. Yeah. I am internally grateful that I've made enough to make a career out of it. But I, I like that Jackson's pointing out my success, and yet we're talking the literal number twenty three over here. Jesus, get it right. It's Charlie really hates skiing. Andrew. Twenty two. Sorry. And I'd never go skiing. <laughs> There's no internet. When yeah, you ski. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you have to like helicopter up to those places, don't you? Uh, I guess it depends. Probably not take, all of them. You can take the mm. chairlift. Would you take the chairlift, Charlie, or would you be too scared? I'm. I can take a chairlift, Jackson. It's just flying. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly kind of flying, the... though. It's just a chair flying. Yeah, it's a yeah, low well, flight. I wouldn't take the over chair like lift. a fucking. They look two so feet dinky. of snow. Like that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I more mm. people probably die from chairlifts than they die from plane crashes, right? Yeah, but that's Surely. their fault. That's their fault at that point. What if I'd you were stuck drifting on a, on a lift? ski lift for twenty nine days? No, that would be fucking <laughs> awful. You wouldn't even have coconuts either. <laughs> there was a bad movie. What was that bad movie that came out? That was like uh, a couple was stuck on a chairlift for overnight while wolves were attacking them from below. Does anyone remember that movie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What? It sounded it was fucking so awesome, bad. though. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> yeah, they got stuck in a chairlift. What? Uh, someone heard, heard, has heard of it in the chat. I'll wait. Chat will tell me. Mm. Mm. I remember there was a Liam Neeson movie where he was getting attacked by wolves. Yeah, the gray. Gray. that wasn't yeah, in a yeah. chairlift. It was really stupid, too, because the wolves in that uh, movie had, like, personalities and they held a grudge against Liam Neeson for some fucking reason so yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just oh these wolves I crashed my plane and these wolves want to kill me it was like oh I've wronged the wrong wolf 
this is his turf and now he's gonna teach me a lesson like, okay so <laughs> and then yeah. he first fights them so according to some <laughs> research i'm doing i don't know how accurate it is it seems roughly like one person a year and usually none die every year from chairlifts uh a handful Damn of people it. get hurt like 40 or 50 but the majority of people who fall off are fine because they just land in deep snow and they're it's, a, it's fine they're okay <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so Snow's scary yeah. though like what about avalanches what if you land in the snow and it sets off an avalanche Ooh. <laughs> now we're talking about another <laughs> Liam Neeson a, movie what if you fall off the chairlift and land in a pile of coconuts splitting your head open yeah what if you're just a what if you're just a <laughs> super fat fuck and you fall out of the chairlift and make like a fucking looney tunes crater and everyone starts shaking on the mountain from you <laughs> and they all die isn't that isn't that like a giant misconception that people think like if you fall off a chairlift or whatever the snow would just cushion you but like snow is extremely hard when you land on it like that what do you when it's all together andrew just read to you that when people fall off a chairlift they're fine because they land in the snow jackson it's not like cement i thought yeah. it was like cement when the, it was like that no so, the sometimes mis yeah the misconception jackson is with water a lot of people think if yeah, you land water, in water, water from a high fall you'll be fine but they don't remember surface tension which causes water to be as hard as concrete so why wouldn't there be surface tension on snow because snow is more like well, there, it's still, to be fair, there is. Like, there's really hard snow, but it's not going to yeah. be... Like, chairlift's not taking you over that. It's going to be in, like, the cushiony part. Yeah. Ski mm. snow is usually very powdery. Yeah. Weird. That doesn't make speaking sense at all to two me. Men in a, was... Well, this is speaking as two men in a tropical climate who have probably never been skiing ever to another man in a very hot desert climate. You know? We know everything about snow. Yeah, but if I let it, if I let it on a pile of sand, that would hurt. <laughs> Because <laughs> sand that's is tiny like pieces of golden, glass. That's just golden snow. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. We call that the golden no. snow. Oh yeah, take a take a piece of snow and rub it real hard on your arm, and then take a piece of sand and rub it real hard on your arm, and see which one you prefer. Probably the golden. It would just be different sand on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt Australians probably do call it the golden snow. <laughs> well, I mean, they probably call it golden snowies or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we do have snow over here, though. Like, there are a few ski resorts and stuff. Like the Blue Mountains. So it does. I've never seen snow before, though. Have you guys seen snow? Yes. Oh, you've skiing. never seen snow before? No, I've never seen snow. I, I did, so oh I traveled God. down to Tasmania, you know, the little island underneath Australia. It's part of Australia, but it's underneath like, yeah. the mainland. Uh, I traveled the down there from. once. Yeah, Tasmanian Devils. I traveled down there, um, a f like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it was during winter, so we went up to, like, the, the mountains to see the snow. And the snow was so fucking disgusting. It was, like, all muddy and dirty. And it was just, like, it was basically oh, yeah. just wet dirt. Because it was, like... I, I guess we were coming out mm -hmm. of winter at the time. So that was my one exposure to snow is just when it was like mud and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen like the Aww. white, fluffy, typical snow. It's uh, first, all right. So first of all, you're now invited to my Christmas party. All right. Aww. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aww. Please come here. I'll, I'll show you snow and I'll give you a little present with like a bow tie on it and stuff like a. Aww. Nice cartoony Christmas. So and God, do I hope that present that is, is a so subscription to so Kraken. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll pay for it. And by subscription, I mean Kraken is free to use. Because, listen, if you're out there interested in investing in cryptocurrencies but aren't sure where to get started, you should check out Kraken. With Kraken, you can buy and sell over 50 of the most popular cryptos like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, and all the rest 24-7. Super easy to get started. Just download the app, create an account, and you'll be investing in minutes. One of the best things about buying crypto through Kraken is that you don't need a lot of money to try it out. Even if Bitcoin is worth like 40, 50K, you can still buy as little as $10 worth just to get started using Kraken. Find out for yourself why Kraken has one of the highest rated, is one of the highest rated places to buy crypto for over the last 10 years. Visit kraken.com slash official to learn more or search for Kraken in the App Store. And I'll just tell you straight up, I have been using Kraken since well before they sponsored this podcast. It is my go-to exchange. I've got a handful of them under my belt. I've got a couple others, but Kraken is my go-to 
it, it just sets the gold standard for usability, ease of use, just quickly able to do what I need to do. A lot of options, tons of different cryptos. I fucking love Kraken. So check out kraken.com slash official to get started in crypto investing today. Mm-hmm. Nice. Let's invest Thank together. You. At, at Kai's Christmas party. I'm investing in that yes. event. I'm investing in <laughs> Kai's Christmas not. party. That's gonna... Yeah, come here, buddy. It's gonna like, be the uh, new fire God, festival. I hate this so much. So, you've not... You've never seen snow. You know what I really, yeah. really hate and I resent about existence lately? That I have to live through global warming instead of another ice age. Like, I'm built for cold. I hate that it's getting warmer instead of colder. Fucking hate it. I agree. I run hot yeah. as well. And so... Same. I was gonna say, are we all like warm-blooded people here? Are we like? Do we all prefer <laughs> yeah. winter most, over most summer? Most humans are. Right, <laughs> yeah, okay. believe it or not. <laughs> any any reptiles here? <laughs> but we do, do, do we all yes, prefer I winter? Too am I think three of us prefer winter. Fellow no, I human. fucking hate winter. That's why I love Florida. I hate what? winter. Hate it. What? Absolutely hate winter. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh my god, you're one of those. I bet people like you drive global warming intentionally for some fucking reason. And I saw this tweet a while ago, I, pu I just pulled it up, because now you have this new breed of uh, global warming enthusiasts like Charlie here, what? who just don't give a shit about <laughs> other human beings. They argue, unironically, that global warming is causing fewer people to die, which is fine. So this tweet says, temperatures are rising, but deaths are declining. Why? Because more people die from cold than heat and AC. Five times... Five times as many people die of cold as heat, even in hot India. Warming saves twice as many people than it kills. U.S. halved, halved, uh, halved heat deaths since 1960s. Also, I cannot speak. But point is, Charlie, nobody cares if like fewer people are dying. I'm sweating. I hate it. <laughs> it's sorry. uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I didn't even think of that, to be honest. Stop defending it. <laughs> I forgot that you were probably <laughs> sweating. It was pretty wrong of me to encourage global warming. Why do you prefer heat? I can never understand people who like heat. It's so bizarre. It's just, it's, I don't know, I hate the cold. But you can easily get warm in the cold, like, cold environments. Yeah, you can just layer up or set in kind of a fire. When it's yeah. super hot, what can you do? I Strip down naked? That's all you can do. Even, even when you, like, hop in the ocean or water, you're still hot. I don't know. I, I hate hot temperature. I hate summer over in Australia, and it's like nine out of 12 months over here is summer pretty much, so I hate it. Yeah. It's genuinely disgusting, and you guys don't even know. Uh, so Europeans are... I don't know what it is with Europeans. They really like a low quality of life. They enjoy not enjoying life. They just... They revel in it like pigs. They They enjoy misery, so... No place in Europe generally has AC in their homes. The That's fuck? like a very, yeah, it's a very foreign thing uh, to Europeans. It's just completely uh, an unknown concept to them. So when it's really, really hot in Germany, what we do is uh, we just sweat like pigs. <laughs> oh, what? what? And we sit here and we cry about how Americans are gross and yucky with their ACs and their freedom. I thought Europe was cold, mostly. At least, like, Germany. It, it like, is. Germany's north, right? Yes! But, Jackson, thanks to Jesus. global warming, it's getting hotter! The fucking summers are still hot! You know what's ironic? It's probably because he uses the air conditioning so much. But <laughs> oh, what? oh, fuck you! Okay, yeah, alright. It's not corporations spilling oil into the oceans or anything. It's, again, once more, it's Kaya littering. <laughs> yeah, one time, Kaya. that one time, <laughs> super <laughs> villain for it. Just yeah. walk to a trash can, it's, asshole, and be <laughs> It's me not recycling a Coke can that destroyed the planet, it's not BP. BP's never I done think anything it can be wrong. Both. I think it's like 50-50, BP and Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, it does suck, though. It's like, you guys ever listen to all those reports from the eggheads? They're like, well, you guys, if we... If every human on Earth literally kills themselves right now, we can lower the temperature in 100 <laughs> yeah. years by 0. point nothing degrees. It's like, oh, wonderful. Why is the Great. onus always on us? Why do we have to do the work? Because it's, it's our fault, Jackson. We did this. Sasu, fuck. I mean, you and me. why can't there... No, whatever. 
Why can't we take down BP? Who who needs fuel or anything? What do they even give us? What does BP give us? <laughs> they give us good memories <laughs> of oil covered pelicans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All those nice photos of penguins covered in oil. <laughs> Heartwarming stuff, BP. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> Wasn't there yeah, just a thanks. yeah, there was another big pipeline uh oil spill apparently in California. Recently? So that's cool. Yeah, apparently. Oh yeah, oh. that's the one where oh. it like lit the water on fire, right? It had like the like vortex of Oh, hell. you're talking about way back. No, that was, that, that, no, that was this happened like a day ago. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a new oh good. One. Can't can't wait to hear how this is oil also spill. our fault. Yeah. Recycle more. Most of that oil was en route to bigots. your air conditioning power plant. Oh. Yeah, but th- I whatever. Yeah. I wish, I wish, this is a controversial opinion, I wish that penguins and seagulls didn't have to suffer for our mistakes. Yeah, they should all just be dead, then they won't suffer. Never wonder how a panda tastes. Panda? Like, cooked. Yeah. I mean, aren't they so super duper endangered? I think if I was like a billionaire, I'd buy one. Just to to eat it? Just to be able to say I ate one, yeah. I need a panda. I need a panda. I'd try it if it was already dead and my decision of yeah. of yeah. Uh, eating it had no consequence on its life. Like, if it had died of old age or something, I'd give it a nibble. Give it a try. But I wouldn't support okay, an industry enough. that condoned, like, slaughtering pandas for rich aristocrats to eat from. Yeah, me neither. It just, I'm also kind of offended we're trying this fucking hard to keep them alive. It's, like, almost <laughs> offensive that we're setting up fucking candlelight dinners for them and actual zoo employees have to manually make them hump and the guy still doesn't want to do it the guy panda like whatever fine fuck it evolution weeded you out he's got performance anxiety it could be another global warming issue they could not want to fuck because they're all hot and sweaty you ever get like that like if you're super hot (laughs) i don't want to fuck why don't they artificially inseminate pandas with her semen. I don't it's a lot more fun when the they have off. sex. I don't know. Hmm. Jack them off real good. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually Let's a really good question. Why idea. don't they just artificially yeah. inseminate them? Because it's expensive. What? It would you be just extremely to, expensive. You just need one guy that's like minimum wage, a little bored, and you just give him like a, like a pan to catch it. So they yeah, do it like so, a horse. Yeah, what? Well, Wait, I, you I, shoved googled, the cum up there? <laughs> I googled panda artificial insemination, which is normal thing I Google. They haven't done one since mid 2020, and even then, this seems like exceedingly rare to be done. It's like a like a fucking like special case that they do it. If pandas are in such high demand and it's so incredibly difficult to get them to fuck, why not just artificially inseminate a bunch of them? I, know. I don't think they're high in demand. If- I think oh we're my just god, to stop Jackson, them. stop. Being You've dead. said too many things this episode you don't know anything about. Pandas are one of the most demanded comedies on the planet. China comedies? literally barters what them if? with trade. <laughs> yeah, but you don't what? want to flood the market with oh, that's too a real many thing, pandas. By the way. What if the Chinese... What if the Chinese are trying to keep a limited number of them so they, they are. can have the only pandas in existence? They are. This is an entire thing. They will barter pandas to small countries with fledgling economies <laughs> so they can use them as promotion uh, for, in exchange for favors. It's a real thing. It's a whole it's actual thing. So, yeah. Okay, so they're not animals. They're just fucking currency. Then. They are. God yeah, damn, all right, right. Now I get why I, they're trying I would so encourage you guys to, to look this up. I, you just unlocked a deep memory for me. I watched this years ago. Oh China literally uses pandas as bartering chips in international relations because what they'll do is they'll go up to a country and they'll be like, hey, man, we really want to build our oil rig in your country or we want you to build this thing for us or we want to, like, have you vote for this policy. And in exchange, you can have 14 pandas. So you can put them in your zoos and your museums and your science institutes because pandas are that big of a tourist commodity. They are in that much demand around the world. People love pandas that much. It's nuts <laughs> how much a panda is worth. God damn. So I, yeah. think the, like- I think the issue then with artificially inseminating them is it's different to inseminating a horse because pandas are aggressive, right? It'd be scary trying to throw some semen up them. What? Or getting semen Wait, from them. How did you get that from that? Yeah, so, so China leases a panda to a zoo for $2 million. 
And if they have a baby, it's another $600,000 a year for all of Damn. the, uh, what they call panda cost and research. So they make a fuckload God. of money giving out pandas. <laughs> research? Yeah. Doing nothing. <laughs> Someone's writing bullshit checks. Yeah. So basically, China gives out these pandas for one, two, five million dollars a year, and the zoos will sign like ten year contracts because they need to show them off for tourism. So I mean that's ten million dollars <laughs> per panda. So if they give them like fifteen, twenty pandas, it's a bunch of money if you're doing it like all over the place to a bunch of different countries. True. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Holy shit. I had no idea. All right. It's so. Hmm. Yeah. They literally throw them around like Bitcoin as bargaining chips. They're like, yeah, uh, we want you to sign this policy. So here's a uh, $45 million and a panda. It's it's crazy. <laughs> Pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ch Charlie, want to go half seas on a panda? <laughs> I have 50 bucks in my wallet. <laughs> right, we're halfway there. Hey, let's ride. <laughs> so what's the what's the kind of upkeep on a panda? Though? How much like money does it? involve i to, to i don't know question. but i'm willing to bet the amount of people who come in to see it would vastly pay for it yeah they'd probably are huge. Yeah, but how will, yeah but you know how cats are pretty low maintenance you don't have to wipe their asses or anything or like they just shit in the litter like how high maintenance are pandas you can't even make them fuck yeah it's like very high maintenance i bet you have to literally spoon feed these idiots you have to, like, have force to them to stay alive. God damn. They fucking, when they eat in captivity, they apparently have to have a very specific diet involving <laughs> specially prepared food. Oh, they're such assholes. They oh like, they're my god. They're dumb. Them. Yeah, it is. I mean, who's, who else's fault is it? God. Also, how did they even survive <laughs> this long? What kind of special diet do they need? Do they only eat like the most expensive caviar? Uh, brought out by like a five star waiter. They have they have a mixture of honey, eggs, fish, yams, shrubs, oranges, and bananas mixed Jesus into Christ. specially prepared Jesus food. Which, they okay, actually, yeah. These sons of bitches are eating better than me. Yeah. They they eat honey, so Winnie the Pooh's kind of like accurate. It's pretty fucking canon, yeah. Hey, Winnie the Pooh is not a panda. He's not a panda, but he's still a bear. I didn't yeah, know but bears, bears actually bears like honey. Bears love honey. You, wait, you didn't know that? No, I thought yeah. that was just like a Winnie the Pooh thing. I, I didn't know like normal bears loved honey. Oh yeah, they do. I no, think they, they do. do. Yeah. Like brown bears, black yeah, bears. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure bears eat honey because their thick is their fur is so thick they don't even feel the bee stings. So they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. Plus honey's just good. Have honey you ever had honey? Good. Honey's great. God, I wish they sponsored this episode, so it'd be perfect. <laughs> but yeah, honey honey's good, honey's amazing. I fucking love honey. It's literally the sugar out of a bee's asshole. Yeah. Uh, or mouth, rather, <laughs> but still. But dude, their tasty. their ass mouth is so good. Bro, that asshole tastes so fucking oh yummy. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I like these pandas being just so picky. Yes, and I... I Desire a slave carrying room temperature cola behind me at all times, or else I will not have sex or eat. <laughs> it's like petrol. Yeah, man. Their pandas are the history of them is so fucked. There's just so many like god awful things you have to jump through. So many hoops to get a panda and raise it, and yet it makes China a fuckload of money. <laughs> in the scheme of things, People though, I bet it's not a huge them, contributor to China's like GDP or anything. Oh, oh no. Yeah, no, but but and course, even then, yeah. what's funny though is it's not for life. That's if you you're life. renting the panda, so if you can't pay after ten years or your contract goes up, you have to send it back. So well, yeah. I mean, you don't own it, right? Yeah, it's a lease, so you don't. You're they not even buying the panda from them. You're fucking renting it. And they live for about so 20 years ever... in the wild, more in captivity. So if you're only getting a 10-year lease, which is the average, that thing might just have a whole nother full lease behind it. So, <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. That's probably, that's probably why they don't fuck. They're sick of being treated like objects. <laughs> they, they see the horrible conditions. <laughs> they understand. <laughs> oh, like slaves. They should go on straight. Is there like a panda union, maybe? Ooh. Yeah, strike, strike. That's what they're doing. They're striking fucking. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. that, How they, much they, they possibly strike? The system crumbles. 
Yeah, and they should deliver themselves. What are themselves. they going to threaten us? What are they going to threaten us with not doing at this point? They should put themselves in their own shipping and call it Panda Express. Oh, nice. imagine. Yeah. Damn it, they are <laughs> cute. Oh, yeah. well. The pandas are extremely cute. I, I think they they're are. adorable, but they're they're idiots too. They're they're the most like bothersome cute animal. They're the most just obnoxious. Yeah, but they're so goddamn yeah. cute though. They are. I love bears. I, don't know. I think I bears are the cutest goddamn animals. Have you ever met one? No, they'd probably eat my yeah, dick off. But like, bear. they're super cute to like look at. I just think they're adorable. Like, I watched a bear break into a car once, like a video of it, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's so fucking cute." Oh, those are pretty cute. I yeah, know. those videos where they like break into trash cans and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just like but hanging then... out. Yeah, but at the same time, then you see them like. When you get the comparison, when they stand next to an everyday item that you know, like a table or a chair, and you realize, oh, that fucking thing is bigger than a car. Scary. Yeah, it is. I would have you absolutely ever seen die to a bear. A like, I would be one of those people that thinks, like, I can, like, make it calm down, like, try and pet it, and I'd die. No doubt. Yeah, the bear whisperer. Yeah. You get mauled to death. I was going to say, have you guys... I know they're extremely dangerous. I know that fact's already been proven by, like bear scientists or whatever people being mauled by them <laughs> but have you guys ever seen an actual like bear attack because i don't think i have i no. don't think i've seen a video of like no. one being actually aggressive Only i saw in Revenant. um i was gonna say that fuck yeah i saw leonardo dicaprio get attacked <laughs> by a bear <laughs> look at that video in chat posted by apo that those are the videos of bears i see and i just couldn't imagine something like that attacking anyone same, yeah. <laughs> God, it's so creepy too, though. It's like a human in a suit. Um, for <laughs> listeners only, it's a gif of a bear literally walking on its hind legs like a person yeah. in a fur suit. <laughs> it's like trying to fit in. That's so cute. It's so goddamn <laughs> cute. Bears are the, absolutely the cutest. Of every deadly yeah, animal on the planet, bears are number one. Well, they're, they're just teddy bears. Like, they're, yeah, we're designed to think they're cute, I think. Because they are. Through like, te well, yeah. There's a reason people made uh, toys of them. Yeah. Well, they walk around like that a lot. <laughs> it's comfortable. Maybe oh, that's baby what Bigfoot. Bears. Yeah, okay. maybe that's what the baby original bears are Bigfoot. Super cute. Oh my god. Is a cap yeah, that adorable. gif of the baby uh, bear? All right, we should wrap. Uh, Dad, it's just us, Danny us should put over. these on screen as well if he can. They're pinned in the Discord channel. Alrighty. Uh, thank you for watching this week's episode of the official podcast. Bonus bonuses are at patreon.com slash the official podcast. If you want to go listen to that, there's over 80 episodes over mm -hmm. there. There might be a fair few of them that we talk about bears if you enjoyed our bear conversation. So you should go listen and find out. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you then. Bye-bye.